Some military medical volunteers were slightly intimidated, to say the least, by the number of residents lining up at the Guam Innovative Readiness Training Medical Mission for almost the past week. Remember, we're soldiers, so we're used to seeing high-stress environments in other contexts, particularly combat. So in this case, I, I look at that and I go, boy, that's big, that's intimidating, but we're safe, you know, we're going to do a great uh, turn for the community. So uh, it's like, bring on the challenge. Partnering with the Department of Public Health and Social Services and other federal partners, day six of the medical mission that's open to those who have Medicaid, MIP, or uninsured, had another large set of residents from all across the island lining up for free healthcare services such as dental, vision, physicals, and vaccinations. Dedero resident Gianna Navarro was with her three-year-old son Xavier and her cousin Keith De La Cruz at the event. She said that insurance on the island can not only be difficult to come by, but very costly. And because she and her family don't have insurance, they go to these medical events as much as they can whenever they pop up to get all of their health needs met. Sometimes it's not approved or our job doesn't have available, living part-time or full-time. I do understand for some factors of the job that they applied for, it's hard for them to get approved by that insurance company or the insurance company doesn't provide that sort of health care that the worker needs. For instance, you know, most people have families. They do need the family insurance, which costs a lot of money. And, you know, money is such a huge factor that, you know, they have houses to pay for, cars, transportation. It's just hard to add medical into that situation. It's just difficult because money is such a big factor. And uh, no one tries to go into dental, for example, or to uh, go get shots. Everything costs money. Navarro said she tried to get Medicaid for her and her son, but the process, she says, was difficult. They didn't get back to us as soon as possible. We always had to call them, and they'd be like, well, I'll let you know, but it just never happened. Sinohanya resident Travis Vincent agrees with Navarro and De La Cruz on how money plays a huge part in weighing in the necessity of health care insurance. When you make minimum wage in the private sector, you have, you're making like $10, $10 an hour, still not enough to cover all that. So, so let's say your job even offers um, medical insurance, would you still take it? or? I wouldn't because that's basically taking about anywhere to $700 to $800 a month just on insurance alone. Right, so yeah. even if they weren't able to provide these services, yeah. it's taking so much of your pay. Yes. Is, what does your family normally use the money for? Pay rent, pay utilities, food, cars, pretty much everything, the necessities to get by. Although he and his family are under Medicaid, he says there's still many limitations. Even the process to set up a doctor's appointment can take longer than it should. You would have to get approval first, and that takes a few days to get the approval letters. And then you would have to find a clinic that takes in Medicaid patients. Takes it takes a longer process. It could be anywhere from a couple of days to about a week, depending on the approval. And what if your family's really sick and you're, and you're working? How does that work? It, it, it kind of stresses out the... It takes a stress on your brain because then you have to find a way to get the immediate care that you need. But then again, you have to go through the process that takes a little longer. Although Dr. Joseph D'Angelo was not aware of the full context of how healthcare is on the island, he knew that Guam is considered to be an underserved area. Much like Guam, I live on the big island of Hawaii, so we're very underserved there as well. And we have a lot of issues and a lot of problems with the shortages of doctors. So unlike some, some of my colleagues that come from the mainland, come from more typical environments, I really empathize and can understand what it's like here to have limitations. As of news time, the medical mission has assisted over 2,500 people for the past five days, according to officer in charge Andrea Bowers. The medical mission will continue until August 10 at the University of Guam Cabell Fieldhouse from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Bowers highly encourages residents to stop by and take advantage of all the free health care services, as well as help them get outside assistance once the mission is complete. It is also very important that we provide the follow-up care. And we've partnered with the Guam Department of Public Health so we're making sure that the services we pro provide on the, for the 10 days that we're here, that we also make that connection with the community partners so that we can have those um, persons that do seek care here also have that follow-up care in their own community. For 
more information on the requirements for the medical mission, visit KUAM.com. Julian Hernandez, KUAM News.